OK, it's still AC 3.2, describing the contribution of agencies to so achieving social control and looking at the tactics and measures that are used by agencies. And we're going to look today at prison design. Quite a short presentation, this, but hopefully you'll find it informative. So there's no doubt that prison design can impact on crime and social control. Um, one of the designs that's used in some prisons, it was very popular right up to the 1920s and it's still around in some prisons today, is the idea of the panopticon, the all-seeing shape design. And um, the French philosopher Michel Foucault argued that in modern society we're increasingly controlled by surveillance. And he illustrated that through his description of a prison design known as the panopticon. So the concept of the panopticon was to allow the observer to view all the prisoners without the prisoners being able to tell if they're being watched. So most panopticon designs involve a, a circular row of cells all facing towards a central guard tower. Now the idea is that the prisoners can see, can't see out to the guard tower, or can, their view is very limited, um, so they don't know whether they're being watched or not. So it's achieved, social control is achieved through prison design. The behaviour of the prisoners is regulated by the design of the panopticon. So we've got the tower in the middle from which it's possible for the guards to see each cell in which a prisoner's kept. So the prisoners can be seen, but they can't see the guards. In theory, they can't communicate with them, the guards, or their fellow inmates. So the prisoners don't know whether they're being watched or not at any given moment. And therefore, the theory is they behave just in case they are being watched. So the surveillance of the guards turns into self-surveillance by the prisoners. The guards have no need to discipline the prisoners. The prisoners discipline themselves. And of course, Foucault's theory can be linked to today's use. Sorry, Mr. the apostrophe out there of today's uh, use of CCTV cameras and their impact on our behaviour. And there's a little clip there that you might want to go to to have a look about the whole idea of being watched and the panopticon and today's society. Um, I found it quite interesting. You might too. Now, prison designs evolved through the ages as technology has progressed. And I said that the panopticon um, sort of fell into disuse within the 1920s, although it has been reintroduced to some extent in some of the American supermax jails. So um, let's talk about American supermax jails. So as I said, um, prison designs evolved, technology has changed, attitudes to the treatment of prisoners has changed. So if we take new designs such as the American supermax jails, they're the most secure levels of custody. And their objective is to provide long term segregated housing for prisoners who represent the absolute highest security risks, including those who pose a threat to national and international security. So the one I've picked is uh, the prison in Florence, Colorado, which holds some of the most notorious American terrorists, you know, the Boston bomber, the um, Unibomber, uh, El Chapo, the um, the the gangster who were tunnelled out of a previous prison, they're all in there. It houses 360 inmates in ultra high security. And you can see here that the cells are actually um, pre-cast in concrete. So nothing can be moved, nothing can be changed. Everything is, uh, it, they're dropped in and, and formed in a, in a concrete shell and then dropped into the design. And you can also see that they've employed the panopticon model to some extent. But the key thing with a supermax prison is it costs two or three times more to build and operate than a traditional maximum security prison. So the running costs, the setup costs are incredibly expensive. Now, if you want to see what life is like inside there, I would recommend having a look at this YouTube link. It's a very brief um, clip. It's about six, seven minutes long. And that looks at what life is like inside that supermax prison in Colorado. It is the most secure, the highest security prison in the world. Very interesting look at how um, how life is in there. Now, obviously, high tech and supermax prisons, as I said, are incredibly expensive. And that's why many prisoners or many countries 
keep prisoners in old style prisons. So nearest to us, we've got Dartmoor Prison. It was originally designed and built in 1806. So it's over nearly 200 years old. And it was designed to house prisoners for the Napoleonic Wars. Now, if you think about that, in terms of our age of aims of punishment, when we go to the Napoleonic Wars, if the prison was designed to hold prisoners of war, the only aim really that it's looking at is protection. There's no attempt in that prison design to look at rehabilitation, schooling, that sort of stuff. So you could argue therefore, therefore that the prison design is not fit for purpose if your purpose is also to rehabilitate prisons. So Dartmoor is supposedly closing in 2023 and the reality is new, a new prison somewhere is going to have to be built to house those inmates, which is going to cost the public money, which comes out of taxes. And of course, the public aren't always keen to spend their money on prisoners when you've got underfunding in the NHS, roads, schools, etc, etc. But we'll be looking at those barriers at, in a later assessment component. So if you want to know a little bit about the newest prison that we've built in this country, that's HMP Berwyn, that's in Wrexham, holds 2016 prisoners, opened in 2017, so three years ago, and that cost uh, a quarter of a billion pounds to build, 250 million pounds. And I've put a link there for you to have a look at um, what it's like inside, some quite interesting uh, little BBC link, which goes around the prison and looks at the cells. So you can see what they're like there for you. Now, you could also contrast our prison system with that in other countries. And I've chosen Norway and particularly Bastoy Prison, a very interesting experiment. It's been called, been called the Norwegian prison that works because it's got very low recidivism rates, as well as the world's nicest prison. Now, the Bastoy Prison, you can see it here, it's on an island in the middle of a field, really picturesque. Prisoners live communally in comfortable homes, so they have a house, not a cell. Each man has his own room, they share a kitchen and other facilities with other inmates. They get a meal a day provided for them, but any other food has to be bought from the local supermarket, cooked and prepared by their prisoners themselves, and they get an allowance of uh, around $90 a month. The inmates earn roughly $8 a day on a variety of jobs that include growing food, looking after horses, repairing bicycles, woodwork, and maintaining the facilities. So what you're getting there is effectively prisoners having to live with each other harmoniously, go out to work daily to earn things so that they can eat um, and survive. So the idea behind this is that the prison is preparing those prisoners for life in the outside world. As well as that, each inmate is offered high quality education and training programs to increase their skills. So they're taught, you know, woodwork, cookery, um, other, other skills um, that makes them employable in the outside. So Bastoy Prison's on an island, one square mile in size. You've got 115 inmates with a staff of 69 prison officers. And overnight, you actually only have five prison officers on the island overnight. When they have free time, the inmates have, can visit the church, the school, the library. They can do leisure activities, horse riding, fishing, tennis. And all the guards have received three years training. Um, if we go to the US, the average training is six months. And, uh, it and they resemble social workers more than prison officers. And I've included a link here for you uh, that gives you about a, uh, a six, seven minute clip of life inside Bastoy Prison, uh, interviews with the prisoners and the, um, and the warder. So have a think about Bastoy Prison, have a look at that video and look at the recidivism rates. Because whilst this is incredibly expensive, if recidivism rates are really, really low, in reality, it pays for itself because people are not being put back in prison, which means they're, generate, uh, they're out in society, uh, they're paying taxes, they're generating income from the com com country, and therefore they're contributing to society. Whilst people are in prison, they're not paying taxes, they're not earning, and actually they're draining resources. So you might want to consider that. Now to compare 
other prisons in Norway, and this is uh, my final slide, you can look at, look at Halden Prison, which has been specifically designed to achieve social control. So I've given you two links here to look at. First one looks at how they have designed that prison so that prisoners feel um, are controlled to a better extent. And the second link follows the reporter as she goes inside and meets the guards and the inmates. So have a look at those two specific designs in Norway. You've got Bastoy, which is uh, much more of an open prison, and then a Holden prison, which is slightly different. And compare that to our prisons and perhaps the Supermax in America and think about which is the most effective design. OK, hopefully that all makes sense. <laughs>